Hello everyone and welcome to 2021. Hopefully it's going to be a lot better than last year. So I want to open up in prayer first thing. Father, we just thank you that we have the opportunity to come and learn about you, especially today, Lord Jesus, to, to dive into what you went through for us. Father, we just pray for the CERN family that are going through a loss this week and all the people that are hurting, Lord. Please give us uh, your guidance and your help to get rid of all this virus and all this trouble that's preventing us. In Jesus' name, we give this time to you. Amen. Amen. What happened in the CERN family? Uh, uh, John died. John? John yeah. died. That's why yeah. I sent the email out. John CERN yeah. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm going to start, like I'm going to start all my uh, things with this STAR principle that I've been trying to promote. Uh, STAR just stands for to stop whenever you're thinking of doing something for the Lord or some great task. Stop and think about it. Pray about it. Is this for you? Is it for God? Okay, next thing we got to do is think. Okay, how are we going to do this? We're going to consult God to help us plan it. So it's to his glory. And we got to act on it. That's, that's the most important thing, is to act on, on what we're doing for God. Make sure we do it right. Make sure we do it for him, and not for us. Okay, and lastly, we want to review what we did. We want to, want to think about what we did. Was it to glorify God? Was it we're looking for our own recognition? We've got to figure out what we're doing. And this is an everyday thing. So I want everybody to, to learn to be a star. And, and that, would, uh, that would be good with our walk with the Lord. Okay, for today's uh, lesson, we're going we're gonna to we're gonna basically study Isaiah 52, 53. We're going to do the central truth, which is God the Father's ex- exaltations of Jesus showed his approval of Jesus' substitutionary death for us, for everyone. Key verse, Isaiah 53, 5, he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. That's the only way today, in all the stuff that's going on, we're going to find peace. Amen. Amen. So we already have the solution. We just have to get it out there. Okay, we're going to try to learn uh, and understand Jesus' real identity, that he was fully God and fully man. And he was, he was sinless. And his sacrificial death, as well as his supernatural resurrection, was a fact. It wasn't a fable. It wasn't a story. It was a fact. It's a witnesses. Uh, and Jesus, of course, is our model of love and uh, humble satisfaction, hum humble sacrifice for our daily living and our commitment to daily service for Christ. What we have to do daily to try to keep in touch and keep doing what Jesus would want us to do. Okay, I gave you some handouts. I found this really useful. It's a chronological order of all the kings who's related to who, and the prophets, and uh, pretty much runs down everything, puts a nice picture for me. I like pictures and colors uh, better than just a regular timeline. And of course, Isaiah, which we're going to be discussing today, he is one of the major prophets, which means his book is longest, actually the longest in the Bible, right in the middle of it. Uh, but we're talking seven centuries before Christ came, and he's talking about which is quite remarkable, and he, in his, the lesson today, it fits Christ to a T, his life, what he did, and to, just imagine seven centuries ago that somebody told you everything was going to happen. Okay, now starting at chapter 40 with Isaiah, just a little bit of background. Uh, he had already started prophesizing how God wanted Israel to be uh, redeemed and become his suffering, his suffering servant. But, of course, 
with Israel, uh, they failed how many times? Can you count them? I mean, breaking up into two. Every, th every time they would go good for a while, God would bless them. And within a generation or two, they'd forget all about God again. Sound familiar? Sound like us sometimes? You know, we're in the same boat. If we, if we don't get into the Bible, if we don't do the stuff that we're supposed to do and be in touch with God, we're going we're gonna to lose our, our zeal for the Lord. It's easy to forget about him. Miss a couple days at the church, you know. No, I don't need to do that. And pretty soon it becomes real easy to not, not do what you're supposed to do, not open your Bible and read it, not study it. But since uh, Israel couldn't hold up to the task of doing what God wanted them to do, uh, the only option was Jesus. And that's, uh, that's uh, why, he, why he came. And Isaiah outlined the whole future of God's people through, uh, through the Sumerians, the, Bar the Babylonians, the Persians, uh, ending finally with the Romans, and finally Christ, who, who came to fulfill everything. Okay, I would like to go ahead and read all of the lesson plan. Basically, 52, Isaiah 52, 13 through 53, 12. Uh, would anybody like to read it? Anybody feel so led? I can do it. Okay, Dennis? All right. I love the way you read anyway. <laughs> Very kind. Okay. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astounded at thee, his vestige was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations, the kings shall shut their mouths at him, for that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. I go on? Yeah, all the way through 12, 53, 12. Okay, 53, 12. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground. He shall have no form, nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, and a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He is bruised for our iniquities chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed all we like sheep have gone astray and have turned away everyone to his own way and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all he was oppressed he was afflicted yet he opened out not his mouth he brought he was brought as a lamb to the slaughter and a sheep before the shearers Dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from a judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he shall cut off, he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he hadn't done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. And thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul. And shall be satisfied by the knowledge of Shall my righteous servant justly justify many? For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, 
will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul into death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made trans excuse me, made intercession for the transgression. Amen. Be Amen. To God. Okay, lesson's over. <laughs> <laughs> that, that pretty well sums it up, doesn't it? I, I tell you, I I had an experience reading that. It, it, I it's saw, powerful. That's I why saw I want to a read spiritual the battle. Yeah. A spiritual battle that God knew was going to happen, and men were the tools. And the spiritual battle was a demonstration to all that God's righteousness is more powerful than the righteousness of man or wickedness of man. Amen. Yeah, just just imagine, you know, the the film uh, The Christ from by Mel uh, Gibson was was pretty powerful but it was in reality it was he probably suffered even more than that because you've got to figure he was beaten to almost to death have you ever been beaten no have you I've ever been whipped no i have never have and i'll tell you it turns you inside out yeah so so the you know the the picture and what's described here you know you just it's it's amazing when you get, I love the Old Testament. A little carry on. Okay, when Jesus came into the cities and villages, many rejected him because he didn't fit the preconceived notion of who the Messiah was supposed to be. But still, many believed in him, of course, and, and followed him. Some fell away. But why do you think, why do you think uh, he didn't fit the preconceived notions? What were they expecting? They're expecting a military, a military leader to come yeah. in and, and just crush her own. Some glorious, yeah. you know, here yeah. I am, and just yeah. doing all this crazy, Jesus wonderful stuff. Like and instead, you get a little mild manner, a little, a little, little. But you see, wimpy a guy. You see a demonstration yeah. of man's thought and man's religion, and not yeah. a, an encounter with the spiritual. We're more yeah. spiritual than we are physical, but yeah. we have not uh, attained to that in our uh, mentality. Yeah, that's right. Go ahead, Bob. In a way, they were right, though, because there would be a military leader. <laughs> yeah. What they didn't see was that he wasn't coming yet, that he was coming another time. Yeah, they missed, they missed the timeline. <laughs> that's, that's to come. Okay. Anybody got any experience what they what they felt before uh, accepting Christ? What was your What was your ideas of what the gospel was? Oh, it was complete garbage. Yeah. Didn't make any sense. Didn't at make all. any sense, right? No. Hard to understand. I can't understand this and, stuff. Yeah. All these and nows and especially the Old Testament. You know, until 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 uh, till the Holy Spirit gets hold of us and we start reading and we start studying. We actually see, you know, it's amazing because the Old Testament talk more about Jesus than the New Testament does. Actually, when you get into it, because right. everything, everything is leading up to it. Okay, here's an interesting one. Thinking of Christ as a child growing up. Okay, can you just imagine? Okay, being being perfect. He would grow up in a Jewish tradition, being a carpenter from his dad. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah as a, say, young and okay, whatever age you want to go by, but we're talking about a child now, maybe 16 years old. We're talking about a child. Old. We know when he was 12 that he was at least knowledgeable then right. yeah, to teach in the synagogue. That, but he had to put up with all his brothers and sisters, and he was the yeah. elder. Yeah. 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 And so he had a certain example just in yep. their culture, but his own self, he couldn't sin like, you know, siblings almost always have. Yeah, it would be kind of hard to be perfect with all your brothers and sisters. Yeah. And, yeah. and it would be kind of like, you know, Joseph's brothers and brothers and that when they, when they got jealous of him. I imagine there had to be a lot of jealousy and a lot of, they felt like he was a favorite kid, I'm sure. 
and uh, you know, j just imagine how you could grow up and growing in knowledge and having your brothers and sisters question you. And you know, even after time, probably Mary even kind of gave it a for granted what what Jesus really was. And you know, son, other than he was a gifted child, <laughs> obviously. One, one other thing with, with the construction background like I have, um, how about, did he, he never sinned, but most, what happened when he hit his finger or, or hit his thumb or something? Yeah, right. If he, I was, if he was, was, if he was doing, in this room, I was doing there. carpentry work and he hit his hand and... <laughs> He was perfect. He, he, didn't, uh, he, he, did, he didn't swear. He didn't swear. He said, ouch. He said, ouch. I think he was fairly normal. Okay, why do you think his ministry didn't start till he was 30 years old? What did he do, what did he do like teenagers and, and uh, when he was in his 20s and that? He's a man. You know, why do you suppose he was 30 years old? In, the, in those days, the Jews wouldn't uh, listen, respect anybody unless they were at least 30 years old. Yeah, the, <laughs> the priesthood, in, and that was 30 years old. He had a responsibility as the eldest son, and also, we don't know about his father, whether he's alive or not, but still. Yeah, jo Joseph might, or, uh, yeah. Yeah, Joseph might have been uh, passed away by then. And uh, we know later on in the Bible that Mary, that Jesus took charge of Mary. Because on the cross, remember, he gave he gave uh, Mary to John. You know, so Jesus must have had charge. And what happened to his brothers in that? You know, a lot of stuff that we don't know. Huh? The priests went into full-time service when they turned to Yeah. They priests. were in training up to that time. Right. And how old was John the Baptist when he started baptizing? 30. 30. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of, there's a lot more in the, in the Bible. Uh, 30 seems to be a, an all-round number for a lot of things. A lot of things when you when you're going through Old Testament, you see 30 come up a lot. So. <laughs> okay, have you ever had doubt? Have you ever had any uh, doubting questions from people who want to know, uh, you know, how God could do let this happen type thing? One one for me. I, ha I had a friend that uh, I did a lot of traveling with, and he was a good man, but he, he couldn't get his mind around accepting Christ. Uh, we had many conversations, but he would bring up things like, well, how can God let babies die? If he's an all-loving God, how can he let a baby die? Anybody got any experience with hard questions? That pastor's got a lot of them, I'm sure. Not, not that many, but I think of many people, the concept of eternity past, that God has always been, that's something that people say, they just, I can't yeah, that I God can't has always been. That God yeah. has always been. Yeah, and they, and, but they can accept the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> exactly. That we, we came from a, a little cosmic speck that came and, and poof, and that's why we're here. But it, it's interesting because we went, uh, we were down and visited the ark. It's, it's amazing. So, I'll get you in a minute. But it's, it's amazing that all the animals still came from their own kind. They may be way different looking, but a bird has always been a bird, and a dog has always been a dog. You know. People have always been people. We didn't come from a fish. A fish have always been fish. You know, so, but people can't seem to understand that. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I know a lot about death in the evening. Uh, I had a Sunday night drive in that Friday night in the city. And uh, I had two wives that died of cancer. I took care of them. So, uh, God, that's that's the difference. In, in when when somebody dies, like John, yeah, we know where John is, and it gives us comfort. 
it's not nice because we're going to miss him. But we know, in fact, where he is. That's, that's the only way that we can have peace yes. through Christ. Uh, Bob? The worst thing you can tell him is that it's God's will. Okay? You say that it's God's will for a baby to die. Come on. Yeah. That's not God's will. No. Why? Because of sin in the world, because our genes are corrupted, because of situations that come into our lives. Uh, I was hearing the pastor talk today about uh, Joel. Though he slay me, yet I will praise him. He said, we don't know what's coming in our lives. Since I've been a Christian since 1986, I have lost five members of seven in my immediate family. Yeah. Me and my sister are the only ones left. Five members of my immediate family. And then other family members have gone. I just lost my uncle recently. So I've lost a lot of people along the way. Friends, neighbors, <coughs> I'm tired of going to funerals. I'm tired of being eulogizing yeah. people. I don't want to eulogize another person, especially a family member. Yeah, just, just think how Jesus felt. But, but my hope yeah. is in the Lord. And, I, and as I read, my, read the word, I keep going back to the fact that there is more, that this is not all there is, that these things are going to come into my life. What do I do when they come? And my... my what I do is put my faith in him and my hope in him. So, you know, through this whole year, you like they, they talk about, well, how are people healing? Interesting that, that, that there are a lot of people that are going through depression right now through this country and this world because of this COVID-19 nonsense, okay? More than needs to be because of some of the other things that have been going on. But in reality, it's that, the interesting fact is that the people that have done the best were the ones who attend, attended church regularly. The yep. ones who the ones who know Christ. Yeah, the ones That's who continue to go to church were the ones. That, the people that are denied going to church are also getting depressed because they're not able to be with the people of faith. So, yeah. if we are going we, to encourage each other, we should be we thankful that we have exactly. this church home. Exactly. Right. I feel that yeah. uh, when they all passed away, that was time for them to leave. Yeah, it's all in I God's time. God put it in There's reasons place. for everything. That's we just don't know them yet. But the only way we'll have peace through anything is through Jesus. Amen. He's the only way we can come to it. Amen. Okay? He didn't suffer and die for anything that he did. we got to remember that. He died for all of us and all the people in different places. There's a song about that. Yeah. <laughs> he There's was wounded of... for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Surely he bore our sorrow, and by his stripes we are healed. Amen. Amen. Okay, now why? Now Jesus, I'm just going to go back to number 614 here. Uh, and it basically talks about sacrifice in the Old Testament. And it kind of sheds a light. There they are, present their offerings to the Lord. A year old male lamb without defect. For a burnt offering, a year old ewe lamb without defect. For a sin offering, a ram without defect. For everything has to be without defect for a sacrifice. So Christ, being without defect, was the final sacrifice for us. Period. That's all we need to remember. He was perfect, and he had to substitute for us because Israel couldn't do it. They kept falling away. So the only way to bring us, the, the Gentiles, and the whole world into God's favor is through Christ. You know, Christ, you figure when Christ was in his ministry, a lot of times <coughs> when he got angry, it wasn't really at the people. It was at all the sin in the world. Because imagine you know, you see somebody going through a big trouble, a lot of a lot of heartache, a lot of problem, and you know the answer. <laughs> you know you know why they're going through it, but they don't see it and they don't realize and they keep doing it. And imagine Jesus, because he saw all the sin, he saw people's hearts. What a, what a what a burden! I mean, can, you can't you can't imagine it. It's, it's, it's just unimaginable. 
Okay, what about criminals, murderers? How do you feel about them in prison? I can talk on this because we go to prison <coughs> in uh, Mighty River. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to go this year because of COVID. So that shut down our ministry. But we really love to go into prison. We go down to Lebensburg. The, the, it's a medium uh, penitentiary down there. And uh, the people, the guys down there, we actually find more comfort talking to them and, and that than we do when we've played at churches. That seems very weird. And a lot of people I've talked to wouldn't even go into prison. They say, are you crazy? And we got a female in our, our group, Ken, Ken's wife, goes in with us. And, you know, all the years that we've been going in there for at least 10 or 12 years, and all the times we've gone in there, we've had a total peace about it. Never had any problems. Never even had a, an inkling of anything said bad. And, you know, we're playing for 75, and we're going across the prison yard when prisoners are walking around and that. And, I mean, it, it's a totally unique experience. And even though uh, we, we've heard from uh, the guys at the prison, and they're still having services. They have their own bands. They have their own services. Mm -hmm. And they're still still going. They miss us because they like somebody new to come in and, yeah. and visit with them and have song and stuff. But, but it's an amazing thing what God is doing in the prisons. And a lot of people write people off. You know? Here's one. You think any notable figures in the Bible that committed rape and murder and were forgiven? <laughs> David. <laughs> David. Yeah, a lot of David in particular. And David was a favorite of God. You know? I mean, Jesus came from his line. And look what he did. You know, so next time you think that somebody's too bad to be saved or met, give it a second thought. Okay, Jesus performed many miracles in his ministry. Is there a common theme to all his miracles? Well, the, the only miracle recorded in all four Gospels other than the resurrection is the feeding of the 5,000. Yep. But how did, how did he do it? Oh, by thanking God. Okay. Yeah. How about the lepers? God gave yeah. the glory, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. How, about, how about just his word and just yeah. humility? He didn't. Mm -hmm. Whenever he did a miracle, it might have been, you know, just a few yeah. people. The centurion. And it didn't. He wasn't looking for, hey, look what I'm going to do. Everybody come around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everything he did was humble. Mm -hmm. He didn't look for any glory himself. He just spoke the truth. And he, and he spoke things into existence. When he raised Lazarus, uh, you know, that's only accounted for, I think, in John, right? I think that's the only account of him raising Lazarus. And where it says he wept, just think of it, maybe he was thinking of all the sin that caused Lazarus, his good friend, to die. It's because sin has caused the death. He, he raised that, that girl, too, who had been dead for a few days. Yeah, but the, the, the big difference is that uh, Lazarus was dead for four days. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean... He that, James says he stinketh. He that's, stinketh. That's, <laughs> that's an amazing thing. That, well, that's, that's why I really like John's gospel, because it's so personal. You know, he had... He waited like 60 years before he wrote, yeah. and he had a lot of thoughts that, and a lot of personal stuff that went into his. Yeah. That's why that's why it's, it's special. Well, everything in the Bible is special. You just got to understand it and read it. Bob? What, what kills me, though, is that they wanted to kill Jesus, but they also wanted to kill Lazarus because he was raised from the dead. It's like, <laughs> yeah. 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 This well, guy they didn't shows want to, you a miracle. You want to be dead for it? You want to kill? Yeah, they want to, they want to kill anybody that would stand in the way of their religion. Oh, you know, they didn't want anybody they wanted to rock destroy the, the evidence. What they wanted to do? Yeah, yeah. Oh, destroy and, the evidence. That's right. And it's yeah. amazing. They just couldn't. Yeah, the leadership. Had all the witnesses. Yep. Yeah, the leadership. Destroy that. 
<laughs> yeah. All you can do is pray for leadership. There you just go. Just like us. <laughs> First example of fake news. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay. Of course, Jesus was an innocent man convicted of no crime. He was tortured and placed on the cross by public opinion. Mm. Right? How can we hope to find nails and spikes? Yeah. How, how can we hope to find any hope among the the, the brutal description on how Christ how Christ died? Yeah, how I, can we find any hope in that? On his face. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Brian. Because he he rose from the dead. Yeah. And if he didn't, then it's just it's just the story of a nice guy. Yeah. I think and it all boils you figure down what off. he did what he did on his own for the father because all the beatings and that he could have stopped it at any time but he willingly and he was beaten and and when he was nailed on the cross God couldn't watch him I think God had to turn his back you know for just that short time because God was suffering too with him you know think of that you know it's hard to put you can't really put that in human terms because it just there's no way to do it. Right. You know, what Jesus did for us. I like, uh, you know, I always put uh, in my mind, okay, that there's three steps to hope. And the first one is believe. The second one is uh, just wanting to be with them, you know, that right. you know, and that he gives you hope in the afterlife. Yes. So in this world, that comes, you know, without Christ. It's like uh, uh, you come from just like ooze from the ocean, and it's uh, and uh, you work your life for a uselessness, and there's no hope. Yeah, there's you no hope stop. without Jesus. Yeah. you know, and you work your entire life for fame and fortune, and you know, you be at the top, second. like like Trump, for example. We get, you know. To me, he acted like a big baby because he didn't get he didn't get the election. <laughs> but that's my own opinion. But you know, we got we got to pray for those in in power now. That you know, God's going to orchestrate it. He's going to orchestrate COVID. It's going to end when it ends. It may not end. We don't know. They're coming up with new strains. We don't know what God's plan is on that. But you know, we know what God's plan is for our life, yeah. right? We're going to go out through victory, the resurrection. So he, we already touched on this a little bit. He was obedient to the Father, even to death on the cross. And he loved us so much that he allowed this to happen. God allowed this to happen. Okay? He orchestrated it. It was a last resort because he knew that we couldn't do anything on our own. Think of, think of all the times that over history that things have got bad and people have fallen away from God. You know, think of the wars. You know, that's that's just sin. Period. God doesn't want it that way. You know, everything everything we do should be Christ centered. But unfortunately, those that that don't know Christ have different opinions. So the only way that we can help, and we're not gonna we're not gonna reach everybody, and we're not gonna do probably marvelous things in our lifetime, but we may. All it takes is one person doing the right thing at the right place and in God's will, and you can change the world. Literally. Look at the single the single figures uh, in in Bible. Okay, that changed the world, just one person, just by doing what God wanted him to do at a specific time, at a specific place in history. And he can do the same now. Matthew 27, 39 through 44. This is a, a little, just a little peek at what Christ went through on the cross that I never realized before. Does anybody want to read that? Yeah, I got it. Pastor? 27. 39 through 44. 
Those who pass by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself, come down from the cross, if you are the Son of God. In the same way the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, that we will also believe in him. Trust in God, let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. In the same way, the rebels who are crucified with him keep insults on him. Verse 45. Oh, that's it. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so even on the cross, even though Christ could have called a band of angels and got him out of there if he, if he wanted to. But he had to. On the cross, People are still mocking him and criticizing him. Even the, even the, even though the one, the one uh, that was with him may have got saved at the end when he finally realized what he was talking about. But to to put up with all those insults and all that craziness, and to have been beaten to death, almost to death, and hanging there. Can, can you even imagine? And, and uh, the, the, the people like his mother and John and that, that was witnessing that. Roger? To put in perspective, when you think, we're talking about creator God who created things, who spoke it into existence. That's what we're dealing with. Yeah, the creator is nailed on the cross. Yeah. And, and the people are mocking him. By him all things. When you read those passages, even as I watched that movie, what came through was not not just the brutality, but that he would that he would allow that to happen. But it showed me how much God loves the world that He gave it on. Yeah. But He provided the sacrifice that we could not provide, the substitutionary yes. sacrifice that was never good enough. But He was the best. And he saw for himself, he obeyed his father. Yeah. In the end, it the showed me sacrifice. when I read about yeah. his mercy and his love and how it endures forever throughout the whole Bible, and it came home to me when I saw that crucifixion. That yes, that's God's picture of his love. And he would yeah. endure all this because he loved me. But why? Why should he have to care? Why should God even care about anything about us? We're like this. We're like microbes to him. But he, yeah, but but he, he cares does. so he much care. that he went yeah. through all that. Amen. You just covered it. The brood of sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't read it. Well, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. You can get ahead of me. That's, that's pretty easy to do. But, it's better yeah. than the movie. Okay, anybody got any good uh, testimony on what God's done for our own lives? I know I gave mine a few weeks ago. But. Well, I mean, he, called, he called me, and I still sometimes am wondering why he chose me. But um, I, I hated God. I, just did, I didn't just, believe, just didn't believe in him. If he existed, I hated him. And, but he still chose me. And he took me from the, the life of complete, total, uh, just, it was just a bad life. Bad, anyway, bad I, life. I was, yeah, not, bad. I was not doing good things. Yeah. Uh, and he took me and he, he made me better. Yep. Jesus is, is definitely the healer. Yep. You Always. Know, I would. I, I, I was, when I got saved, I thought I was a pretty good person. I didn't really give it much thought until, until he got a hold of me. <laughs> and then it wasn't until then that I realized how far I was. Well, he's still you know, working on know. me. <laughs> but he's working on, if he's not working on all of us, then In we fact, got a problem. I've got a song for that. <laughs> He's got a song for everything, Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, he, he continues to, to help us. 
for, for those that love him, he's going to protect us. You know, we may go through, we may go through COVID, we may end up, uh, who knows when we're going to breathe our last, but until that time, we need to, to serve him. That's, yeah. that's the bottom line. Yeah. I uh, have trouble sometimes trying to figure out how people who don't know the Lord can go through difficult yeah. times because... I mean, I had a heart attack two and a half years ago out of the blue, and, you know, there were some dark days, but I knew yeah. every day knew that, that the Lord was with helping. me or yep. someone came into my room and just witnessed to me. You know, I just don't know how people, it must be a lonely existence without the Lord. Yeah, with, without the Lord, it's, it's got to be a, a really dark place when you're going through a problem. Because you know you have no solutions, right. you know I have nowhere to turn except to maybe friends, and your friends probably at that stage aren't much better than you are. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes worse. So you're gonna get you're gonna get all kinds of advice, I'm sure. But there's only one vi advice that works, and that's this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, who wants uh, Romans eight thirty four? last two words, or the last three words, interceding for us. That's, that's the important part of this. God, uh, Jesus is sitting up there with God. He gave us Holy Spirit to help us recognize this. But anything that we're going through, we have an intercessor in Christ. Christ. He's the only one that was ra ever raised from the dead. To see it, to set with God, He is God, and the only, the only, the only, really, there is no other intercessor that we can have. So God has given the name of Christ to be a name above all names. Above all, yes. And Jesus has also said, and we fail to ex uh, exercise this. Jesus said, "Anything you ask the Father in my name, I will do." So why are we? So <laughs> reluctant yeah. to call upon God for our healing, for our needs, whatever it is. The Bible tells us that God will do what we ask if we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anything we ask for that is in God's will. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. just because I ask for a new Mercedes doesn't mean I'm going to get one. <laughs> no, you've, you've got, so, you've got yeah. to be realistic about yes. this. And God's will is very simple. You know, Micah 6, 8, love justice, do mercy, and walk humbly before God. Yeah. That's what the Bible tells us. Yeah, Michael was a contemporary of uh, Isaiah, mm -hmm. where we're at. That's so, right. It's amazing, all this stuff. Because I'm sure that they knew each other. <laughs> they maybe went to the same uh, <laughs> prophet school, <laughs> so yeah. to speak. Uh, same uh, synagogue. So he yeah. is, God made us all so we need. Yes, we have yeah, to have God. Yeah. Without God, we're on our own. We're on our own. Just like that's dangerous. Just like history, very dangerous. Okay, Colossians six and seven. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Any comments on that one? How do we do that? Stay in the Word. <laughs> what it also tells us, it says being rooted. And rooted, yeah. And yep. this is not a static thing. And build up in Him. So there is uh, activity going on there. If you're static, you're already dead. It's, it's an action thing. Exactly. It's an action thing. you gotta, you got to go with it. you got to be... Doing what God would like you to do, you know, 
being a good person isn't going to cut it. You have to have Christ with you when you're doing it. Everybody has to be a star. That's my motto. Key takeaways. Christ gave up everything to become like us and willing, willingly gave himself up for sin offering for all who would believe. Everybody. That's, that's the solution to all this black, black lives matter. Every life matters to Christ. Doesn't matter whether you're black or red or, you know, Asian or it, does, it doesn't matter if uh, you're Islam. He still wants to save you. That's right. Okay. I would have it's, none lost. Yeah, it's, it's amazing that, you know, you hear stuff like in China, all the, the all, you know, like Pastor says, you never hear any of the good stuff. You only hear bad news and, and when you're like watching the news. You don't hear about the, the, the millions of people that are getting saved in China. Right. You know, okay. whoever made that, that electronics you have may be a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so but behind the scenes, God's working. We don't see it all the time, but all we got to do is stay in what he wants us to do individually. we got to always self-examine our faith through Christ's life, death, and resurrection. It's the only way we can be saved. And it's not by our own works or how good we are. You know, a lot of people think that if they're good, they're going to go to heaven. And they know Jesus. But they know him by head knowledge. They don't have a relationship with him. So that's the big key is if you only know Christ by what you've read and what you've learned and it's in your head and the Holy Spirit hasn't come and made it real to you that Christ is a real entity and he lives in you and he can, by his Holy Spirit, that he can control and let you know when you're doing right and when you're doing wrong. You're just a, a puff in the wind. Amen. Amen. Um, I feel it's really important to hear about our Constitution because it is signed a lot of God and the people that are taking voice away from us as people, the people, um, we really need to pray about that and surrender that. Yeah, we, we always got to pray for, for the government today. that, you know, we're losing, we're losing ground. You know, as they take away more and more things, and you can't see a commercial without a gay or lesbian couple in it. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, oh, that's oh, getting movie. disgusting. <laughs> or a movie. Or you know, movie there's no yeah. series or anything on TV anymore that doesn't have to have a, a gay or lesbian couple, and now more and more blacks, because you have to have a black. Because, you know, we've lost, we've lost it. You know, people, people that do, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. You know, well, we gotta, we gotta become that squeaky wheel for Christ, so that He can grease people up. <laughs> Bob, the one of the biggest problems in the church today is that Christ has become part of the message, but not the message. Yeah. And you know, and our focus is on Christ and and His life and what He did, and His work. And when we don't do that. And he only becomes part of the message, but yeah. only certain things, because yeah. there's a lot of things that are changing. Yeah, uh, it becomes Christ in your pocket. I mean, when they change the Bible to yeah. say that God is she rather than ye, oh. you know yeah. that something's wrong. Yeah. You know, it, these people are teaching these things. Now, people sitting in the pews, they're just as guilty because yeah, they don't, they're they don't just allowing for it. To, you got to look okay at, with for it. yourself in the Word to yeah. make, sure that, make sure it lines up. Okay. Nobody's got anything. I'm going to close in prayer. Roger? Well, you said a key. You listen to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. You get in your walk with Christ in time, and you, you learn to listen to that, and, then, and he guides us if we're, if we're open. Amen. you got to be open to the Holy Spirit. And it goes and up listen. and down sometimes. Yeah. That's one of my biggest problems, the pride that gets in the way. I, can, I want to do this. That's, that's one of my biggest problems. Lord, we just thank you for this time that you've given us to talk about you, Lord. 
and the examples that you've showed us through your word. Father, we're so appreciative that without you we have nothing. We just pray that today we'll be blessed, Lord, and that you'll take this year, make something good out of it. As we go into the sanctuary to worship you, Father, give us pure hearts. Give us open ears. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.